Hello everyone, welcome to today's Zoo to You. I am Corey, an educator here at Stone Zoo. And today, in celebration of World Snake Day, I have Diego, our California king snake, with me. While we chat about him today, I am gonna let him get some exercise on this pegboard. This is enrichment that we use for a lot of our snakes here at the zoo. It's a great way for them to get some exercise, see some new areas, meet new people, and it's a great way for you guys to see how their bodies move too. I'm just gonna let him get on here real quick. So I am gonna be focusing on snake adaptations today. These guys are excellent predators and they have a bunch of really, really cool adaptations that make them such great predators. This allows them to serve very, very important roles in their ecosystems and also for humans. And we're also gonna talk about how we can conserve and protect these guys so they can keep serving those roles. So like I mentioned, this is Diego, our 14 year old California king snake. He's about four feet long, which is pretty average for a fully grown king snake. They are one of the seven subspecies of common king snake. These guys in particular have smooth, shiny scales with a black or dark brown body and white to yellow stripes. And they can either look like Diego here with these horizontal stripes, or they can have one long vertical stripe running down their body. So I mentioned that Diego is 14 years old. California king snakes can live in human care for 20, 30, even more years. So he has a long, happy life ahead of him. In nature, they live in forests, grasslands, marshes, farmland, and deserts in California, Oregon, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Mexico. So they're in a wide range of habitats and in a wide geographic range too. So you could see earlier I was handling Diego. That is because he is not a venomous snake. He is a constrictor. So that means the way he eats his prey is he wraps around them until blood flow to the heart stops and then he can swallow his prey whole. If you're wondering how snakes keep breathing while they're eating that large prey whole, they have this unique part of their mouths called a glottis. It's essentially like a snorkel. It looks kind of like a snorkel. It serves its purpose like a snorkel. It's this tube in their mouth that allows them to keep breathing while they're swallowing that prey. Snakes also have this really unique and well-adapted organ called a Jacobson's organ. If you can see Diego here, he keeps flicking his tongue in and out. What he's doing is smelling his environment around him. So he's collecting those scent molecules on his tongue pulling them back into his mouth, and then that Jacobson's organ on the roof of his mouth is processing those scent molecules so he can sense his environment around him, any threats, predators, prey, everything like that. So snakes also have these really flexible jaws that allow them to eat that really, really gigantic prey. So they have these bones in the bottom of their jaws called mandibles. In animals, and a lot of other animals, especially like us humans, our mandibles are connected by bone. Snakes, they're just connected by stretchy ligaments, which allows them to open their mouths not just vertically, but also horizontally. This allows them to swallow prey as large as the largest part of their body, and it also allows them to essentially walk their jaws over their prey. So I mentioned they can swallow prey as large as the largest part of their body. If you want to know what you could swallow if you were a snake, if you put your hands on your hips and then raise them up to your face, that's what you could swallow whole if you were a snake. So that's about the size of a watermelon. So some unique adaptations to California king snakes are that they are impervious to rattlesnake venom which means they can actually prey on rattlesnakes and other venomous snake species. They also mimic rattlesnake rattles. So he can shake his tail against dry leaves and kind of pretend to be a big scary venomous snake when he's not to scare away threats and predators. So in the wild, these guys would be eating rodents, birds, eggs, lizards, frogs, small turtles, and other snakes. And that's how they got their name, king snakes. They're the king of all snakes because they can feed on other snake species. 
Diego and our snakes here at the zoo eat mice. So because of all the, what we would consider mostly pest species that these guys eat, they're really important in their ecosystems for rodent and frog population control. And they're also really important for humans. A lot of people are really happy to see these guys around because they can manage those pests like mice and things like that, that we don't want in our homes or in our farms. And they can also kill rattlesnakes and cottonmouths, so they can manage those more dangerous snake species that might live near us too. So these guys are really important to their ecosystem and they're important to us too. So some ways that we can help protect and conserve them are that we can avoid using rodenticides. These guys, because they're natural pest control, if we poison mice and then they eat those mice, we're also poisoning our snakes. So any other ways of pest control are preferable to that. These guys also suffer from road mortality. Like a lot of small animals, they can't cross the road very quickly. So if you can safely stop or avoid them, that is a huge help to them so they can get where they're going safely. Like a lot of our other species at the zoo, they also suffer from habitat loss. So being aware of the natural areas near you and how you can protect and conserve them is an amazing way to protect our native and local snake species, as well as all of our other beautiful natives. I wanna make one note before I go to questions. These guys are really popular in the pet trade. As you can see, he is a lovely snake. However, always make sure you do your research before getting a pet, especially an exotic pet. He gets very large, he lives a long time, he has very specific habitat requirements and really specific diet requirements too. So always make sure you do your research first even though they are lovely, lovely animals. All right, are there any questions that I can answer? We did have a question come in. Julie asked, how often does Diego eat? He eats about once a week. Because snakes are ectothermic or cold-blooded, they don't need to eat as often as warm-blooded animals for energy. So he doesn't actually eat that often. And can you remind us Diego's age again and what the average lifespan is for California king snakes? Diego is 14 years old and he'll likely live into his 20s or 30s with us here. And where in the zoo can you see California king snakes? If you want to see a California king snake, you can visit Diego's brother, M, in our Sierra Madre building, which is near Blue, our cougar. All right, I think we're just about out of time. All right, thank you so much for joining us today for celebrating World Snake Day with Diego here. I really appreciate you guys joining us, and feel free to come and visit us here at the zoo.